So um, this is our second part, I guess. Okay. So as earlier you discussed about the the recessions and how Germany survived. Can you exactly tell me when Germany has decided to uh, to invite a skilled worker in their country, or they need more and more migrants? When exactly they have decided? You know, why they need so many skilled workers? So the, after, well, you know, German history, World War II, they have lost the war, and not only they lost the war, lost a lot of men to the army. So when they needed to rebuild the country, uh, they didn't have the workforce. So the first wave of migration was from a former ally, which was Turkey, because they fought with them in World War I. So they brought a lot of cheap Turkish migrants to rebuild the country and to work in certain industries that need a lot of, uh, let's say, low-skilled labor like in the mining industry, in the car iron cast industry, and all of that. So that was the first wave. So they brought these workers, uh, and then it was, you know, they were called Gastarbeiter, like guest workers. Because the whole point was, okay, so you come here, you rebuild the country, and you go back to your country. Well, that didn't happen. As we know, there's a huge Turkish, you know, minority here in Germany. Obviously, that plan failed, because people don't just move to a country for 10 years to work, and then they just move back, because there's nothing... For them back to move into they're just you know you're settled here and they start to bring their families they start to have kids and now we have like few generation turkish but the last time according to statistics the germans had the german population was growing was in 1971 or 70 something in the 1970s that was the last time that the german population was growing from the inside like the babies like more babies were being born than people dying and since then since the 1970s Germany's population growth was entirely based on immigrants. So Germany, has, since the 1970s, before the unification of East and West Germany, the population has been growing entirely on the back of immigrants. Because the Germans barely have one or two babies, so two kids, so you need 2.1 to have the same population. Germany has a birth rate of less than that. Even the immigrants who came, the first Turkish immigrants, they had a lot of kids, which was good for Germany. The second generation maybe have fewer kids, but the general generation of Turkish people, like any immigrant population, by the way, it's not to do with Turkey, any immigrant population, when they move to a new country, they adapt to the new standards. And that's normal. So even the new immigrants, like, no, the old immigrants who came here, they are also not getting more babies. So they're becoming exactly like Germans, maybe one or two. Best case, three. But it's still not enough to, to maintain the population, let alone grow it. So Germany, at the moment, like all European countries, like all European countries, the only country that's still growing in numbers is the UK. And that's also because of immigration. So the UK, even like if they don't have immigrants, the number will go down. So the problem is not that just the number will go down. There's nothing wrong with having a smaller population. Like some countries have really small populations and they work fine. The problem is that the ratio of old people to working people who are paying the taxes and everything for the old people, for the, you know, the pension for old people. This ratio, as long as it's in a good, like let's say the pyramid is in a good shape, that works fine, even for a small population. But in Germany, because there's a lot of old people going into retirement, then it needs a lot of young people to work so that they can fund the retirement of these old people. Now, the Germans are not having babies, well, enough babies. Then immigrants here adapted to the German lifestyle. They're not also having babies. So what the only solution Germany has is that they have to bring more immigrants from the outside to maintain the, the economy. Also, is depending on the immigrants. The U.S. economy is booming and has always been booming. Well, so far, we don't know what's going to the future because the U.S. has a secret weapon, which is high-quality immigrants. When the U.S. gives a green card visa to the best Indian, you know, brains, the best Bangladeshi brains, the best Brazilian, Chinese, everyone <coughs> who is incredibly smart would go to the U.S. because the U.S. system accepts those brains, they absorb them and integrate them within the U.S. society. Unfortunately, Germany till now, and that's, I think, that is a, Germany has to go through this kind of self-reflection period to see what type of society do we want? If the German wants a prosperous society, they have to become more like Americans. So the definition of a German is not an ethnic definition. German as in like white, blonde, etc. The definition of a German has to be become like the American definition. Anyone who lives in Germany is German. At the moment, it's not like that. There is, even if you're here for generations, you're still the Ausländer. Your passport doesn't matter. It's not a matter of do you hold the papers or not hold the papers. 
as long as you have a different skin color, uh, different hair color, all of that, you're still the Ausländer. Even after, even if your German is perfect, probably better than most Germans, the U.S. That is not like that. The U.S. definition of an American citizen is anyone who is has you know the American citizenship on the American soil because it's a country built on immigration. They accept that we are an immigrant country. They accept that you have the Hispanics, the Italians, the Europeans, the Chinese, the Arabs, the all the black. Native Americans, all of them, they are mixed together. Yes, it has certain challenges, but there's a reason why the U.S. is still the empire today. The economy is still strong because they still get their brains from everyone. Everyone wants to go to the U.S. Now, Germany is trying to bring people in because we can see that uh, the foreign minister, Habeck, is going to countries and trying to convince them to come to work in Germany. You know, for the skills, going to universities in certain African countries and telling them to those university students, come to work in Germany. But there's a mixed signal. So come and work for us. But at the moment, we are, you know, we're not going to accept you as part of us because the Germans haven't, you know, created a new identity in Germany. That is, OK, a German is anyone who has a German passport. And that's it. It's still, even though 25 percent of German population, 25 percent of German population is actually Ausländer or Ausländer, like our foreign foreigner or of foreigner origin. 25, one in four. But the country still sees itself as a German country. In the UK, there is actually less, this is the idea that, that people don't know, is that there are less foreigners in the UK, a proportion from the population, than Germany, in Germany. But the UK sees itself as a multicultural society. And that's why it's easier to integrate in the UK because the definition of being British is not that you're white, okay? So it's a different definition. Because the UK had a long history of, okay, I understand of the colonialism and all the populations in the UK come from former colonies. And that's, you know, that's a horrible history. We're not going to go through that. You know, the what they did to India, Pakistan and Bangladesh and all the other colonies in Africa and America, all of that. But as a society, it is a multicultural. Yes, they have problems, but it's, let's say, working a little bit better there. In Germany, at some point, the Germans have to decide what type of society do you want? We either want an open society and economically prosperous, or we can choose a closed society and then we go to extinction. Because if they decide to have a closed society, and then, you know, they don't want immigrants, they don't want, you know, to change the German identity and all of that, with their birth rate, they will, in, in 100 years, they probably will go half and they will go to instinct. Uh, so far, I believe, and this is why I have a little bit of hope, in, in, a, in a very sad hope in a way. One of those high tech countries like Japan, Japan is one of those countries that are facing a lot, of, sorry, Japan and South Korea, two first world countries, high tech, all of that. They are incredible, unfortunately, they are incredibly racist in a way that they don't want immigrants to come in. Both countries. Both countries have an incredibly high problem with birth rate. Incredibly. Like South Korea is one of the lowest birth rates in, in, on the planet. Japan comes next. So I believe we need to have an example of one of these two countries collapsing on itself. And then the other countries will realize, wow, well, we don't want that to happen to us. So we're going to change things from inside because as long as South Korea and Japan still want to maintain to have the Korean culture, the Japanese culture, we don't want to mix with other Asians. Okay, uh, they're going and the, the trajectory of the both countries is really at the moment incredibly negative because they were in Japan. There's a huge population okay. at some point so in our lifetime. Yes, yeah, so yes. I think you uh, you have covered what I've asked, and now uh, okay. exactly. I need to I need to ask the relevant questions. Then why Germany started uh, free tuition fees? And um, and since when they have started free tuition fees? And I've I've heard a lot of news. Uh, they're going to implement again uh, tuition fees. So what is the reason in Germany why are they doing this? Again, from my point of view, these are not tuition fees. I will talk about tuition fees when they're like five thousand, in a few thousand more. Anything below a thousand, because in Spain, okay, uh, there are tuition fees for state universities, and it's one thousand. Again, one thousand in the scale of things is nothing. So the tuition fees in Germany, I, even if the tuition fees will be 1,000 a year, that is nothing. It's 12,000 pounds in the UK. It's 70,000 in the US. So in Germany, 
again, I, I wouldn't talk about any tuition fees unless they become really high in numbers. And I doubt it will ever become high in numbers uh, because German universities produce a lot for the country. They're not going to, you know, shoot themselves in the foot like that. That's the only reason. So tuition fees, these are like just, I would believe, like small numbers uh, just, you know, to help here and there. But they're not really tuition fees. Okay. Like if you know about economics. So um, that's a good topic. Uh, that's a good answer, I guess. So the, the, the thing is now, uh, Germany has already implemented the tuition fees and now they are trying to... Um, attract the immigrant and business students. Wait, wait, no, 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 no. It's not that Germany hasn't implemented tuition fees. First of all, there are 16 states in Germany. Each state has its own ministry of education. There are 16 ministries of education. People need to understand that, that there is no unification in Germany. It's a federal country. There are 16 states with 16 different systems. So tuition fees are really related to the states. Some states will implement it, some states won't. So it's not like a German tuition fee. It's a few universities have tuition fees. The majority, the vast majority, are still 100% free. This is very important to say that the vast majority are still 100% free. So let's say if München Technische Universität, Technical University of München, because it's already oversubscribed, you know, many people want to go there because it's a renowned university. If they add a tuition fee, they can. But other universities wouldn't do that. So it has to do with the university itself. And let's say they add 500 euros for tuition fees. So 500 per semester, 1,000 a year. That's still nothing for an elite university. In the US, if you want to go to elite university, that's 150,000 a year. It's incomparable. So, uh, do, you, do you think that implementing uh, tuition fees on some universities, not every, as you mentioned, do you mention it's most renowned university in the world, I think. 60 day of the place, 16 in the world. world. The question is, uh, do you think that it, uh, will it affect the student from poor countries or developing countries? I, no, I wouldn't, because the, these universities can afford to, even even if TU Minchin would have 10,000 euros, I would never believe they would ever have it. They will still have the same number of subscribers, because the person knows if I get a degree from there, I will find a job that pays 60,000 a year. So 10,000 for an income later, 60,000 is nothing in comparison. And that's why they can do it. Okay, so you have to think about economics. Yes, it might not, it, it would affect certain, you know, uh, poor individual students that would never be able to come. But again, there are thousands of universities in Germany. <coughs> Most of them do not have fees. So even if you can't go to TU München, you have, you know, University of Wuppertal or University of Dortmund or, you know, they have many other universities that you can go to. They're totally free. So it's not a dent at all on the system. Not okay. It have no effect. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to ask you about the schooling systems as you are a teacher, school teacher, apply school teacher in Germany. So uh, you were working as a teacher maybe more than one year, I, th I think, mm -hmm. almost. So what is your... Long time. Long time, okay. So uh, what is your... Um, opinion or what is your experience or where do you think Germany schooling systems is one of the best schooling system in the world if they are like that then tell me why 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 should not other countries follow their school system or if you can see the challenges in the existing systems so can you please give an idea about it um sorry working in different school systems you know having been a UK qualified teacher working in the UK I I'm disappointed in the German school system. I think the German, German university system is much more fair, but the school system in Germany has a lot of challenges that I didn't even think they would exist in Germany. Uh, it's a totally now, it's going to be like a million other videos talk about the school system, but for foreigners, they need to know that the school system here is challenging for the foreigners, incredibly challenging for the foreigners, not a little bit, incredibly challenging for the foreigners. So if you have kids here in Germany, you have to be incredibly attentive to your kids. Like there is no way, there's no way as a foreigner in Germany, you just, you know, put your kid in school and somehow they will survive by themselves and do well. You know, the statistical probability is incredibly like near zero. So if you're a foreigner here, you have to be really working hard on your kid. No sitting on TV and then you watch your news from Bangladesh and all of that. No, no, no. You have to spend like an amount of quality time with your kid to help them through the school system because the school itself, is not going to do that. So the parent has to do a lot of things here. And that is quite challenging for the parents, especially if they don't know the system. So you have to consider that that in the UK, I, from my experience, the UK school system is much more fair 
for to foreigners, but the university system is not fair. Here it's vice versa. The school system is not fair, but the university system is better. How, and, about, uh, how about getting a German degree, German passport, then sending your children to UK for schooling, and then when they are enough grown up, then come back to Germany for higher education? Is that who, who has the money to do that? Okay. I mean, send them where? So you're going to send them to the UK if, to a private if, school? If, if, UK were a part of, uh, part of EU. No, 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 nothing to do with the EU. Like, how are you going to afford living there? I mean, the UK is incredibly okay. expensive. So you have to be incredibly rich here to send your kid to, the, to study in the UK. There's like no way any foreigner here, unless they're like a billionaire somewhere, to actually do that. So that is like a plan out of the question. Mm -hmm. Out of the question of all. Like, no one would do that. Okay, keep going. I want to interest about to know the split system and the challenges. Can you please tell me more about it? Or what, what do you the challenge, first of all, the school system in Germany is, unfortunately, what we call a social duplicator. So it duplicates the social classes from before. It doesn't allow the working class to, in general, okay, we're talking about in general, statistically, it doesn't allow the working class to rise up to become middle class. And that is one of the challenges of the German school system. Yes, it's good if you are lucky to be in a gymnasium, or other part of you know the high level schools, but it's incredibly challenging if you're not. And can you please give me? I mean, the audience us. wouldn't know the difference between the school systems here. It's uh, going to be a very complicated issue. And not only that, like I said before, there are sixteen states, sixteen different school systems. Okay, so there is no way someone can have a knowledge of the sixteen different school system with every school system advantage, disadvantage, and which one is better. It's incredibly complicated here. Uh, whoever comes here, good luck with that. So that's all I can say. Actually, I'm I'm going to have this problem in, in, in next future, I guess. Because yes, I, I know. Uh, good luck with that. That's what I'm saying is that uh, I'm really there are 16 that. different school systems. That no one knows, like no German would even know anything about the state next to them, let alone the state, you know, far away from them. So, uh, <laughs> It's like that, it's like having just 16 different countries together now, and each has a different system. Now I, I have a I have a mindset that uh, for example you are living in our northwest right column and you know the system of that state and I live in Bayern which is a different state yeah. maybe they have different schooling system I didn't know any teachers they have a very different school system so um, maybe uh, for my children's future I have to move to uh, northwest right column if Could be. they can provide the best systems than other other how should I know Could which be. one is better. Yeah, but I, I don't know. No German knows. Like, seriously, there is no analysis. No no German can say, like, I'm a, I'm a foreigner. And I can't, and I say, okay, if a foreigner is living here, I understand, I don't know. But even if when I ask Germans, they don't know. So if a German native who grew up here, born here, and knows all of that, they can't tell me which system is better. How can I, as a foreigner, know this kind of answer? Like, there is no way. It's one of those, I would say... Um, it's like a Russian roulette game. There's a bullet in one of the chambers. You know, you could be hit by the bullet. You could not be hit by the bullet. It's a matter of luck. But okay. yeah. if we are Muslims, we also have to believe in faith. So if you are in a certain state, then there is something, you know, about your faith to be there. So you have to work with that. So it's not always what if, what if, what if. There are two relevant questions regarding on this topic. You have to give answer on both. The first question is, uh, what do you mean by actually, you say that, that, that the parents have to have, have to give a lot of work on his, on, on, on his, on their they have children. to work on the kids, yes. On the children, because the uh, schooling system is not enough. They didn't give yes. support to the children. Okay. What do you mean by it? What kind of support parents should give to their children? So the parents should actually supplement the kids at home with, with books, with knowledge a lot. So they cannot just leave the kids to do whatever they want. And what, what do they do in the schools? Do. What do schools do with them? The no, 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 no. But you have to understand how the system works. And it's going you to don't be know about it. Yeah, no, but, but even like there's no way I can do that in a interview. That is maybe 100 hours of video footage just to explain the school system in one state, in one state, okay, not the 16 states. And there is no way I can explain like, in details what the school system does in Germany, uh, because it's incredibly complicated. <laughs> and for your viewers, I don't think that they are like, uh, going to suffer that much for not knowing, because there's not much they can do about it. But here, what I want to say is that if you're a parent, you have to really add, you know, supplement your kid's knowledge from school. The school itself, it's not only about the knowledge. There is implicit uh, 
thing in the school that the kids come to school already knowing stuff. The foreigners don't know this stuff. That's why they suffer a lot. So when they go to the school or the primary school, the kids are expected that they do know certain things. The foreigners don't know them and they suffer and the start the grade starts to go lower and lower. So you have to work at home to supplement the knowledge of your kid so that when they go to school, they are in a good position. Okay. Let's say, think about like this. Imagine like the school as a track race. You know, uh, the German kids are, you know, they're all running on the track race. They all have the same position in school. But the, let's say the German kids have been training for years before for this moment. The foreigner kid has been done no training for this moment. And they both have the same starting point. Yes, the chances are equal from the start, from the starting point. But then because the German kids have been training for years before, they're going to have a way better advantage in running to the final you know, line and they're winning the race than the you know, foreigner kids. The foreigner kids, let's be honest about it. Foreigners in Germany, in general, have an issue helping and supporting their kids because they think, oh, I will outsource it to the school. The school does everything and I don't have to you know, think about it at home. That is the, that's the, like the worst thing you, the parent could do. The parents, the foreign parents should actually work, in my opinion, double hard as the German parents because their kids is already at a disadvantage from the start of not knowing German, the German language. So they have to really work really hard to push the kid to know not only German, but know a lot of information before they start school and all of that. The foreigners, unfortunately, they don't do that here because they don't realize how the system works. So they're just like, okay, the school does it, let them do it. Maybe I'm going to make a new one more episode regarding the schooling system because I think I need more videos regarding it. And one video is not enough. Yes, but that, that means this video would be for the you know the foreigners who are already in Germany who there have kids of, here. There are a lot of people I know in <laughs> almost uh, 10 to 12 family. I know personally they are having babies and some are planning to have babies. So I think they didn't know about it, but we have discussed so many times so when we meet each other and we have discussed these issues. But as you are a teacher, you are responsible. True, true. I have advantage of giving you back and forth in the system. Yes. Um, yeah, but that would be like for your so audience concern, for Germany. So my concern is, uh, as I'm a Muslim, and, and I want to have my kids not only to know about German cultures, I have no problem with that. She can go and integrate with German student. doesn't matter. I don't mind about it. But my concern is school is giving enough knowledge to my or is there any schools in Germany where I can send my kids for Islamic uh, knowledge? Is there any schools? No, no. How can the, the, all, all the, all, yeah, well, at home. In this case, Germany is not like the UK. The UK has this kind of, you know, so a lot of supplementary schools. Germany doesn't have them. So what, do you, mean, here. what do you mean by at home? Do you mean by... The, the parents, parents have to work know, on that. But the parents should know about it then. then they exactly, should... exactly. No, no, no. So there is no supplementary school here. There is, the parents what, should what, know. Is, what Turkish has done in this country last seven, well, 70 years. They don't have do any schools for the uh, Muslims. No, but, but it's in Turkish. Do you know Turkish? Do you want to send your kids to a Turkish school in Turkish? Do you know Turkish? So this is it. The, the Muslim community in Germany, in my opinion, is a failed community. The Muslim community as Muslims is a failed community. You might have, you know, a, a relatively successful Turkish community, but it's in Turkish for the Turkish minority and not a Muslim minority, which is, should be in German. So... Anyone who's coming here thinking, you know, Islamic background, all of that, they are the, they're going to be the pioneers. Either they're going to work and create something here, or things will continue to stay exactly the same. They have to be the pioneers in, in this region. I have I, I know I know, I know an Indian actually when I was starting my uh, learning my German language classes. So I I, I have met with a young boy. He was he was eighteen years old, and he told me that he was born in Germany, but his his father uh, sent him to India. And he was in India for 17 years until he completed his abitur or college degree. Then he came back to Germany because his father wanted him to know the Indian cultures first to make his uh, understanding experiences. So what do you think about it? That's a, that's, a, that's a wrong thing to do. That is a wrong thing. So what you're doing is that you're just pushing the problems to the next generation. So this person who has been in India for 17 years coming here. Okay, so he's a foreigner to Germany. So we have to, to struggle exactly the same thing again and again and again. We're still in the same kind of wheel, in the same place, just you know, doing replicate, replicating the same problems. The problems have to be here. They have to be a courage to be here in this country, to take responsibility in this country, to build something in this country. This is, again, a type of... So the parent, in my opinion, and the parent didn't want to take responsibility of the kid here, so he outsourced the problem back to India and then let them teach him Islam 
And then he comes here, which his culture is very different from his. So he is going to have to integrate the German society. And they're going to have problems integrating with the German society because all the issues that <coughs> are here, they are still with him. The problems are still the same. No one worked here to create a new community. So, and if the father, let's say, decided, you know what? I am going to create something in Germany for my kids and the kids of everyone else. Then probably after 17 years of working on the problem, probably there is would be some kind of institution for that. But the fact that he outsourced it back to India, we have the same problem again and again. So this is not a solution. I would personally think this is the worst kind of solution. It's not a solution. It's the worst kind of action a parent could do. Send the kids back home to study there and the culture and all of that. So this is like, you're not putting the kid on the, the first line. You're pushing the kid backwards in the race and you're putting like a five kilo metal block on his ankle and tell him, come on, run the race against Germans. This is exactly what, what is the kind of analogy. For I, understand, I understand your point. The reason is why I'm acting like that. Uh, this is my own observation, so my opinion. So um, as I talked with a uh, German uh, lady, she is having two kids. So the problem in Germany is that once your kids become uh, teenage, 14, 15 years old, you know that young and young and armed, the, the, the organizations who help the student, uh, young people, some teenagers, they trying to push in, brainwash those student teenagers. They say that, okay, you don't need your parents. Now you're mature enough. You can take your respons own responsibility by yourself. Let me finish. Then you can maybe give you an argument. Okay? So she, she told me that. So once your kid becomes 18 plus, then they will, uh, they will, they will decide. They need their own space, own freedom. Maybe they have girlfriends, which is totally haram in Islam. So for that kind of mindset, parents are more, more maybe they are more afraid to raise their kids in in Germany and this culture. First of all, I can. Why would the Union do that? I mean, there's this kind of conspiracy theory. There's a lot. The foreigners are incredibly well at conspiracy theories. Everyone is conspiring against us. The Yugen Arm doesn't even have enough resources to deal with the hardcore cases, let alone to brainwash everyone to do this. Kids in Germany mostly move out at 18 because they go to university. And normally the university is far away. That's the main reason they move out. If the kid goes to the local university in their own city, majority of them don't move out from the house. Okay? The majority, when people say, ah, oh, in 18 they move out, no one moves out unless they have a reason to. And if the Yugen um, deal with this kind of situations where the parents are abusive at home. So obviously, if the parent is abusive, go out as soon as possible. You don't need to be with abusive parents. And if the foreigners are going to come here and bring their own, let's say, uh, style of raising kids, which would be ab considered abusive here in Germany. So obviously, the... This child service is called Jugendamt, or child service would interfere in these kind of situations because it would be like if you're hitting your kids, and then let's say you hit your kid, and then kids go to school and they're like they have a mark, a blue uh, mark on them because they're, you know they're beating at home. Well, obviously, the Jugendamt is going to get into a situation, but again, in Islam, that's haram to even hit your kid. I mean, I'm not sure what you know what in people in Bangladesh saying or that, but it is haram to beat your kid. That's the end of discussion. People might start beating the kids left and right, or like beating the wife and all of that. So obviously, all these kind of things. Uh, and that's why I said just to before, just to add here the, the the mentality of our country's parents or the the in the in, in the Pakistan of Bangladesh, they they are more rely on their kids. They believe when they get older, their kids will support them physically and as well as economically. That kind of mentality we have. So we are growing up in a dependent mentality. Maybe that's the reason in Germany they are self dependent, and that's why they have created a society where everyone is important and everyone should have their own identity and their own. Oh, and not only that in Germany. Uh, if you're working in Germany, you're putting, you have pension at the end, you have rente. Okay, so it's not like you shouldn't be dependent on your kids. So the whole point is that you have worked enough, you have saved enough, you have put enough in the pension, you know, uh, box, whatever, you know, account that you will get something back when you're renting. You should not be in Bangladesh. There is no system like that. So obviously the kids are the pension of their parents. Here it's not. The parents don't need, should not need their kids financially. And hence, the kids can actually grow up to become their own selves. But right. that's a totally different system. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree. I agree with you. But the, the, from the parents' side, the parents always want his or her kids so that they listen to their parents 
you know, and respect them. That's I know, I know. This is, I know. This is a cultural thing. If they want to replicate this culture in Germany, it's not going to work. So you have to be very clear about that. This is the replication of a Bangladeshi culture in Germany or any culture, not only Bangladeshi, any Asian culture, any Muslim background culture, North African, Arabic culture in Germany is not going to work. If you come here and to with a mentality I'm going to replicate, it's going to fail. It's definitely going to fail. It has failed in other communities. I can see the results of that failure. I can see how the kids become, you know, criminals, how the kids become um, outside of society because they're lost, because their parents never really prepare them for the German society. But they're also not included in the original society because they live in Germany. Like if, if the kid is born and raised here, what identity, Bangladesh identity, would the kid have? None. It's only from what the parents have at home. So they do not belong to the Bangladesh identity, but they don't belong to the German one because the parents have blocked all the, you know, the uh, reasonable ways for the kids to integrate in Germany, healthily integrate in Germany. So the kids is lost. Lost kids are the most problematic kids because then the lost kids can be used by extremists, you know, to be lured toward ISIS and all these kind of organizations. These are the, the, the target of these organizations are always lost kids. No kid is going to join these kind of organizations if they have been raised in a properly good family. I mean, a family that is well adjusted to this environment. So the kid would feel, okay, I live in Germany. I'm integrated in Germany. I have my own identity, my own identity that is both German and Bangladeshi. By pushing only, we are Bangladeshi, we do this, we do that. It doesn't work. It hasn't worked. It has. That's one of the reasons why communities are failing in Germany because all of them have the same idea I want to replicate my country in Germany. And by the way, it's not only in Germany. It's the same thing in any other country, the UK, the US, any Canada, Australia, New Zealand. It's the same issue. It's a social issue, not a country issue. Any immigrant population that does not adapt to the new country, it will fail. At the moment, I would say we are failing. As a Muslim community, we are failing a lot in Germany. I think Muslims are the only um, community or Muslims are the only peoples. They... They believe on their own Quran and Hadith. That's why they think they're the best. For example, I also think that my religion is the best. And that's the reason they always have collapse or conflict with the other cultures, other religions. So that is the most challenging part in Germany that I face. I, I, I wouldn't say so. I wouldn't say, you know what? I wouldn't say so because I've met German converts. Mm -hmm. I know German converts. So how come a German can convert to Islam and still be German and really a good German person, but somehow we, coming from outside Muslims, cannot integrate and become good Germans. So this is the thing. I've met Germans who have been Muslims and they're still, they didn't become Bangladeshi or become Arab or become, you know, all that. The point they is, have the Quran and the Hadith and they're good Germans. Exactly. So the point is here, it doesn't matter if you're Muslim, you can all come to Germany and live as a Muslim life following Germans' norms and values and their culture. So yes. it's, okay. there's no yeah, problem. Yeah. Well, you're going to be, there's going to be some compromise, okay? But the compromise, you are a minority in a country. You have to understand that you coming here, anyone coming here, that's a decision that I took to come here. So it's my responsibility to integrate that. I cannot come here and start creating troubles for others and say, well, you're racist. Look, while me is creating the problem. The point is here. I think we are running out of time. The point is here. Uh, I understand we are coming to Germany and we have to accept their uh, their rules and regulation, everything. I understand that. The thing is that the people from Bangladesh, we have a slavery, a slavery mindset because we are colonized by UK. Colonized. In the years, 200 years, sorry. And when you come to Germany and we we, we we spend time with Germans, we live here for a long time, then we become act like Germans. And then we think that, okay, we, we, we try to forget our slavery mentality and we try to adopt the German mentality. And then... It's not so easy to say that, okay, uh, you came to this country, so you have to compromise on those True. areas. People sometimes are failed, True. and it's very complicated, I guess. True, but that's why, in my opinion, the reason like you have to rediscover yourself. You have to rediscover your religion and decide what is important in Islam. What is a German Muslim doing? Like a German convert or revert, okay? Like a German, white, blonde, whatever. When they become Muslims, what are they doing? What am I doing differently? Why is his Islam different than my Islam? So they should, if we follow the same rule, so it's a cultural issue. So we have to rethink that. We have to rethink about our religion. Is it really religion or is it culture? If it's culture, leave it behind. Can if I take one culture, more Leave it behind. Can I take one more question? No, no. Um, 
we shall meet at some point soon enough and then we can continue the discussion in different ways.